Hey, I'm Lockie from Xano, and today I'm going to show you how you can use large language models to produce structured data outputs that you can then use as part of your workflows. So for example, maybe you want to add information to your database, and when ChatGPT responds, it gives you a big bunch of text, but you're not quite sure how to take that text and add it to your database. I'll show you an example of how we can do that now. So for example, we have our company's table here, and we've got a name, a description, some employees, and a location. We want to have the AI produce this data for us. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to be using ChatGPT to do this task today. I'm going to take this example request that they have inside the API reference. I'm going to head across to an API endpoint and start to configure the workflows required. Firstly, we're going to make the external API request, and we're going to import the curl, which we just copied from the documentation. Now, this is a real quick start because it's given us the required structure to make the request to open AI got the correct URL, the method. We've even got a message down here, which is telling us what are we actually sending across to ChatGPT. But firstly, inside of the docs, we actually have this section for the response format, which in particular, we're able to have the LM respond in JSON as opposed to text, which is a structured data format. So let's instead take this item here and also add this as part of our parameters we send across to ChatGPT. Now to do that, we already have a few here. So I'm just going to copy a pre-existing one for the model. And we can update this to instead be the response format. And we're then also going to provide a value as the object, JSON object. So we've now got the required model controls added, but we need to also adjust our messages or our prompt to ensure we're actually getting it to do the task we want. So from our database, we can actually copy this schema and we can give this as part of our prompt where we basically tell the LLM to produce the data. So we can add a box here to say, you are, your task is to generate JSON formatted data as per the below request. You are to generate sample data. Tech company follows the following schema. I put a single record in JSON format only. So in particular here, we're specifically telling the LM to output the data in JSON format. We've given an example structure of how we expect the response to actually come out. And then as for the user prompt, that's going to say, as always, use your manners, please generate JSON as requested. Okay. Now, last thing we need to do to adjust this request to MPN AI is we also need to add authorization as part of our headers. So I've already stored my open API API key inside of my environment variable section in system settings. So here I'm just going to concat on the existing environment variable I've created, and I'm going to have it reference the open API key. So in theory, if I set up everything correctly, we should now be getting back some sort of response from ChatGPT. Fantastic. We've now got a response and we've got this record here getting created by the AI. So how can we actually now take, we've got a big wrong, wrong response here. How can we just take this individual content and then add that to our database nice and quickly? So I can take this entire response by copying it. And then I'm going to create a nice placeholder variable, which is going to be the JSON response. And I'm going to use our subpar filter, paste in this response I've copied. And inside here, I can now navigate directly down to the actual response. As you can see, it's quite nested when you're getting a response back from ChatGPT. I'm now taking this content, which contains the object I'm looking to add to my database. And then we go, as has formatted the required notation for us. So we're now getting back a stringified JSON object. So in order to actually make sure this is valid JSON, we can work with this part of our function stack, we need to take the text format of a string and just convert it back to a normal JSON object. And we have our JSON encode and decode filters for that, but we want to use the decode on here to take the stringified version and convert it back to a normal object. So now when we run a response here, we've got our hopefully structured JSON object we can work with back as our response. Here we go. We've now got a workable record we can add to our database. So taking this, we can add a record to our company table. And because we've created this uh, with the same key names as our database, we can actually use this magic wand here. I can apply it to the JSON response variable we created. 
The only thing I want to adjust is I want the timestamp to instead be now when I've created the record. And if we run this, we have a look at our database. We've now created a company here for tech innovators, which is basically exactly as we want. If we run it again, we'd be able to form the same item and get further items added to our database. So quickly recapping, when we want to get structured responses from ChatGPT or other LMs, the first step is making sure that we update our prompt to specifically give it one, instructions to output in JSON format, and two, an example of what the expected response is like. Some large language model providers, such as ChatGPT and Grok, an open source hosting provider, they also give you additional controls to adjust the response format to the JSON mode. But some LLMs like Anthropic don't have an option for that, but they just output JSON response just based on the prompts you give it. So you'll need to work it for each LLM, but that's a really quick way to get structured output from large language models.